obviously you have an ego or you wouldn't make the film, but then, you know, if somebody says, oh, that film really sucks, what are you going to say? Oh, no, it's great. You know what I mean? You're the artist. You're the filmmaker. You're, you know, you're always going to have your self-doubts. And, but you know when you're getting played, man. You just know it. You know it in your heart. Getting exposure is good, but you also have to get, you have to reward the people who made that film with you. And then the food that would serve you for lunch and for breakfast and for dinner was caviar and, and certainly, you know, sirloin and mignon and it was just amazing. And then they had drugs up the kazoo, you know what I mean? You know, bowls of coke up this high. And yourself. I mean, you owe it to yourself. You got to get paid. You got to live. You know, you got to accept the distribution end as part of the of, of part of the thing. You know, the producers there is to get, help get the money and help get the film distributed. You know, help get the money to make it and help get the money back after you make it. You know what I'm saying? Because in the end, it's yours. If they want to steal it, great. Right. You know, let them steal. Right. Sue the shit out of them. You get the point. The point is. There's a big plus in the film getting out there, but you gotta make them pay, man, because you know what you put into your film. And, you know, these guys, you know, there's a lot of motherfuckers out there who are just looking at it like, let's take these suckers for a ride and give them the sunglasses and, you know, a fast car and a hot date and we'll keep the money. But you deserve the money, I deserve the money because you know, it's all blood on the screen, you know what I'm saying? The thing with Robert De Niro was that yeah, he hadn't done a play in 18 years. Uh, we got the actor for you, this is Paul Caldron, Robert De Niro, and I'm trying to act real smooth. I say, hi, how you doing? And they gave me the sides to read, and I'm reading with De Niro, you know? And I'm like face to face with him. And I start reading my lines, and then I'm going to say my lines back to him. And I freeze. <laughs> I said, oh my God, in my mind, I said, oh my God, it's Robert De Niro. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I was frozen, I was speechless, I was numb, I was, I couldn't move. I said, I am fucked, I am not gonna get this job, this is it for me. And something in my mind said, either poke him in the chest and make him real, or you're gonna get fucked. So I went. Wow. Poked him really hard in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Like two feet back, and he was like, and everybody went, <gasps> and I said, fuck you, yeah, right, man, yeah. So I continued on with the scene. If I hadn't done that, I probably would have lost the job. Yeah. But I had to poke him to make sure that he was flesh and blood, that he wasn't this illusion that I had created, that he was just, just like me. I directed, I went in as a director. It was very successful. And I became part of the studio, very active in the studio. They asked me to be on the board of the governors. I just woke up one morning with this whole idea. I even envisioned the courses that we would teach, which was essentially what I had studied over 12 years. Mm -hmm. Dance, voice, acting, etc. And I went back to the studio and I said, look, why don't we utilize our own resources? And the studio, which had closed, had kept its doors closed forever. We, we all looked at each other, and everybody said, why not? It was, as Victor Hugo used to like to observe, my idea was time had come. We have now 125 guests, by coincidence, he was 125. Wow. And um, I don't think there's ever been an archive like this before, and there never will be again. You worked in a lot of independent films. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what do you think the differences are in terms of acting, uh, independent versus studio film? Well, it, here's the thing. I was working a couple of years ago with a friend of mine who has made a really good living. He's a millionaire. And he told me in his trailer, smoking a cigar. It was a huge trailer. It was a, a two-bank with a shower and a refrigerator and a dishwasher and a TV and a couch. He said, I want to break into independence, smoking a cigar. Sounded like Edward G. Robinson in Key Largo. You know, he said, oh, I want to break into independence. No use to this. An independent means that they're going to put a shower rack across the wall and they're going to put a chair behind it and 
Nancy addressing this. He looked at me, he pulled the cigar out, looked at me, and said, you're fucking with me, right? I said, no, 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 no. Usually, you'll get the curtain. Sometimes you get the chair. Sometimes you don't get a chair. Sometimes you get a towel. He didn't believe me. He didn't believe me. He said, if that's an independent, I'm not going to do it. In my opinion, there have been two major major developments in the last 50 or 60 years in film. One was the new wave in France, which changed filmmaking around the world forever. The other is America's independent film movement. What people like Harvey Keitel do routinely, work for nothing just to get a movie made. I mean, uh, the big filmmakers, the, the conscientious, actors, uh, they do a film for money, and then they invest that money in, uh, in something that the studios simply would not do. The studios are wrong. The studios, I mean, in my big factory wedding, which isn't the best movie ever made by a long shot, but it is a movie that appeals to people who want to see something which is character driven, which is um, uh, amusing for uh, interesting reasons, um, and which reflects their own lives. Hollywood behaved as if those people had died and gone to heaven. They hadn't. They were out there waiting for a movie they wanted to see. Hollywood is interested in, in what they like to call legs. What does legs mean? Legs means that somebody will see it more than once. Who will see it more than once? A 12 year old. Hollywood, I think, is putting them in it. Not the first time, not the last. It tends to put its money on the wrong horses. I put it out, it's my thing. I self financed the movie. I did. I picked the actors, I handpicked everyone. I wrote the story. I, I did everything. So it's like a baby. That, I, I never understood when people go, don't take offense to what anyone says. Uh, you know, oh, don't care. Don't take it personal. Don't take business. it personal when a critic says, you know, you, I never understood that. I do take it personal. Exactly. It's, it's your fucking, it's your, you wouldn't be human if you didn't take it personal. Yeah, you, know, you think it's a 20, 30 million dollar picture, but, you know, Abel had to eat his lunch on the curb with the rest of us. He had no trailer. Wow. The actors had no trailer. The only one who had a trailer was uh, Christopher Walken. <laughs> The rest of us, we're just sitting on the curbs like the little rascals eating our lunches, you know? We owe it to each other to dig each other's work, to talk about the work. You know, it's really tough to be here. Everybody's in New York. There's a lot of opportunities. Everybody sticks together. You know, it's doggy dog world. You know, basically, I'm looking at everybody like, hey, go fuck yourselves. I can't get a job as it is. The last thing I need, you know, is another two, three hundred filmmakers taking my next gig. I mean, I ain't that young anymore. I think that uh, the independent film that we are question will give us our artists, our actors, our directors, our, our writers. And, um, but even in the short term, it will sometimes turn the tables on Hollywood. All right, that's, that's it for me. Nice. This was a thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. This is fun. Good meeting you, man. What's that? Good meeting you. Thanks for the interview. <laughs>